Good day, good evening chocolate lovers. Welcome to Chocolate TV episode 39. It's the 20th of December in the year 2010 or 2010 we should say actually. Today I thought I'd give you an old Swedish show. I have two chocolates from Mama's Chocolate Factory 1888. Uh, it's a uh, recent startup uh, chocolate factory uh, in the old chocolate factories of Malmö, uh, southern part of Sweden, quarter of a million inhabitants and the third largest city of Sweden. Uh, this is a uh, two seventy percent cocoa count chocolates, one from Ecuador and one from Venezuela, Cojau. It's a famous chocolate village in the middle of the the jungle uh, close to, to the river Orinoco, I think. Uh, they have a long tradition of uh, harvesting uh, wild growing cocoa, criollo beans, in the jungle and then sun dry them on the plaza in front of the small church in the village and then sell it. Uh, and uh, the Ecuador is uh, Arriba Nacional cocoa bean, uh, very famous cocoa bean just from Ecuador, making deep, powerful flavors. This is Swedish uh, artisan chocolate maker, um, popped up two, three years ago. Uh, no, three, four years ago actually. And making sensationally good chocolate for being Swedish chocolatiers instead of the big conglomerates like uh, we all know uh, in Sweden at least as Marabou or Cloetta and things like that. Uh, I thought I'd try these two and then try to finish them off uh, with a little bit of a sip of a Swedish Christmas beer. Nils Oskar Kalas Juleöl. Kalas Juleöl means festivity Christmas beer. Uh, I think I'll start with it. Ecuador 70% cocoa. Pick off a bit, look at it. Um, dark brown, almost uh, you can trace even black streaks in the chocolate. Uh, it's not streaked, but uh, the, the the color is sort of blackish brown, dark brown. 70% uh, cocoa, it's not that high, uh, but it's not that low. And as you know, if you want to taste chocolate, you look at the color and you sniff it and then you taste it. So you're going to see if there's any scent whatsoever. Uh, a faint sugar uh, smell mixed with some uh, dark cocoa, uh, dark vanilla flavors. A little bit of tree bark, a little bit of uh, a nut or nutmeg, even. Very deep in the chocolate scent, actually. Uh, let's taste it. First off, uh, Quite a paradox. A creamy start with a bitter f facet. Uh, there's an edge, a bitter edge to, to the creamy start. Mid on, when the tongue is really covered with chocolate, you can feel the darkness of that chocolate and, and the real intense chocolate flavor mixed with some nutmeg, mixed with some tree bark, just like the scent. And the back end gets not terribly dry, but reasonably dry. It dries out your mouth, uh, your tongue gets a little bit sandpapery. A nice distinct chocolate uh, for being a chocolate. Yes, 
I'll give this one an 8 on the 10 rated scale. Qua, chocolate from Venezuela. This was uh, Ariba Nacional, uh, Forosteros Hybrid, and this is uh, uh, Cuau Criollo uh, It is a little bit more redder in its approach, uh, in its color, and that's only normal. If you see a chocolate that is a little bit more red-ish brown, red-brown, dark red-brown, it's often a Criollo. If you t lean more to the black side of the, the color spectrum, it is a Forosteros, and if you're somewhere in between, it sh should probably be Trinitario, a, a third ground base bean that was used mostly in the West, West Indies and some other countries. Well, a uh, nice reddish brown color and let's uh, see if it has any scent whatsoever. You can almost smell the jungle where this grown. Must grown besides sort of citrus It's a very distinct citrus play on the nose. Not lemon, but more uh, a subtle lime. Some pomelo. There's a dry component, uh, reminding me of the chocolate. A little bit of a, a papery touch to it. can smell a little bit of sugar, but not vanilla. Is it vanilla in this? Cocoa mass, sugar, and cocoa butter. No, there's no vanilla. That's why I don't smell it. Hey, I got a good nose. Uh, a little bit of an acid tang to it. Uh, let's try it. Yes, and a really acid start. It's like, actually you could almost pop a white wine, dry white wine, with some really minerally action. You got a similar start on this chocolate. Turns over a little more lemon lime. And with the sugar, the little there is, this is 70% cocoa count too. The sugar kicks in, you get a nice lemon sugary chocolate feel. Still quite a lot of acidity. And from the middle on backwards, there's a little bitterness, chocolate bitterness, mixed with a, I would say, Almost orange, uh, no, yeah, orange peel marmalade. If you just boil, make some marmalade of the, the orange skin of the peel of the orange. And on top of that, they always have a dry cocoa account. It's omnipresent, the, the chocolate flavor. Nice, refreshing chocolate, but it still turns very dry at the end dries out your mouth and uh, yeah I'll guess that's only my guess that the, uh, the dark Ecuadorian chocolate uh, uh, would go better with a Christmas beer than this more acid lemony limey thing but let's try it This is a typical kind of lager made in Sweden at Christmas time, holidays time. Uh, we usually do it at Easter time too, then it's called Easter Ale. Uh, it's a, often made a little bit darker than the average lager, but um, yeah, we'll see what they say. Uh, this harmony is perfect with the uh, Christmas festivities and uh, Christmas tables, all uh, uh, different dishes. Uh, several sorts of dark, malt uh, and the 
Hop sort of cascade, fuggles and sars give it color. Uh, roundness and a definite aroma with a roasted character. Uh, yeah, that's it. Should be balancing sweetness of Swedish typical Christmas cuisine. And you can't really have a Swedish Christmas table without a Christmas beer. That's it. Uh, smells a great deal of a, of a hops, actually. Yeah, let's try it with the chocolate, uh, the Ecuadorian chocolate, Ecuador, 70%. Well, it's not the best uh, combo ever. Uh, the beer actually, yeah, it complements the, the chocolate, but the chocolate is a bit too strong for chocolate and too dry. And the beer is not sweet enough to overpower that. So you got a, a nice start uh, when you first take a sip of beer, but the chocolate overpowers it and buries the beer flavor in the end. So I guess that's what would happen with it the more citrusy like uh, chocolate too. Uh, to good, do a good tasting with chocolate and, and a beverage, remember to let the chocolate melt in your mouth first so you've got a liquid so you can mix the liquids. Otherwise the liquid will just cool down the chocolate you have in your mouth and even make it reattach itself into a lump in your mouth and you don't get the really uh, chance to to taste these two together. Yeah, uh, as I predicted, they don't go that well together. The lemony, limey feel of the chocolate, the acidity of the chocolate, clashes with the bitterness and, and the sweetness of the uh, Christmas beer. And they actually make, they mate in a way that this turns into quite a, a bitter and tart concoction. That's the way it is. I'm sorry, but yeah. Swedish beer and Swedish chocolate, and uh, not for that good a uh, uh, mix. I would possibly have a dark lager of some sort, and Swedish makers do that, or even a porter. But that's for next time, and uh, Merry Christmas, and hope to see you soon. Bye!